Good Tuesday afternoon, everybody. I'm meteorologist Tim Pandages here with your Atlantic Tropical Update. Once again, talking about Hurricane Larry, Invest 91L, and we're going to jump over to the Pacific Basin that has a little bit more activity as we inch closer and closer to the peak of the season, at least in the Atlantic Basin, which comes up in three days on September the 10th. So here's a look at uh, Larry. Not much change in the last couple days. Still maintaining Category 3 major hurricane status. It's got winds now that are down 115 sustained, but still in a Category 3 space. It's wavered anywhere from 115 to 125 over the last few days as it is slowly edging along to the northwest. A closer look here at Larry's status when the last recon mission through the system, they found that pressures have risen. That means slightly weaker storm there. And the eye wall, as you can see here clearly on the satellite imagery, not as well defined as it was yesterday. And also it's not as large as it was. At one point yesterday, it was over 80 miles in diameter. Now we'll measure it in just a minute, but it's down to around 40 miles or so. And typically smaller eyes do mean stronger wind fields, stronger storms. So we'll see how that plays out here. So why is, is Larry a little bit weaker today? We'll use weaker loose terms there because it's still a very formidable storm. Dry mid-levels, you can see water vapor imagery here highlighting the dry air just off to the west of the system. And there was some minimal wind shear kind of pushing that dry air, trying to get it entrained into that center of circulation. But for now, at least, Larry is holding off that dry air from getting pulled into the system and choking it off. Also, with its slow movement to the northwest at nine miles per hour for a tropical system, that's slow. So we could be looking at something happening here called upwelling, where the storm is so intense and so strong that it's mixing up the ocean. And when that happens, eventually, when it's moving so slow, it'll mix up cooler waters from the depth and limit its heat potential and its energy source. So we could certainly be seeing that here. And that's also why it's been kind of plateauing over the last couple days, not seeing any big jumps or any big dives in terms of intensity here, likely from the upwelling. Overall, though, the storm has been expanding in size. Yesterday, we we're around 800 miles in diameter. Now we're over 1,000. Larger storm as it gains latitude, it'll spread out. Also, its wind field is spreading out, too, as it gains that latitude. Visible satellite imagery, still a very picturesque photogenic storm here. And it's nice to observe a system like this out in the open Atlantic where it's not impacting anybody, especially yesterday. That eye looked unbelievable on the satellite imagery. And as we looked down into it, in fact, in the last couple images here, you can see that there are swirls in the center of that eye. Those are called mesovortices, and they're little spins within the larger spin. And sometimes you can actually find the strongest of the winds in those mesovortices pivoting around that eye wall. So that's what you usually find when you have a very big, strong storm uh, like we have here with Larry. All right, there's the measure on the eye, 34 miles there, about half the size it was just 24 hours ago. And typically on a normal system, you see an eye that's anywhere between 20 and 40 miles in diameter. So we're right within that and that shrinking of the eye. Uh, could potentially lead to a jump in intensity here if it does get moving a little bit faster. There's the latest recon mission there, found a pressure around 960, wind speed at 127. I want to highlight that because that wind speed was found pretty far away from the center, uh, giving an indication or, or a ground verification here that the wind field is quite large and getting bigger as this heads to the north. There's a look at the estimates in terms of the wind speeds and how far out they reach from the center. Tropical storm force winds in that yellow shading here, 39 miles per hour or greater. You're seeing that out to 160 miles from the center, and you're getting hurricane force winds in that red circle there, extending now 60 miles from the center. A couple days ago, that was only out about 30 miles, so it's doubled that wind radii from that center in terms of hurricane force winds. The track itself hasn't changed much. The steering mechanism's in play here. A big area of high pressure well off to the east, another ridge off towards the west, and we've got a trough of weakness pulling it to the north. That's not going to change. The track here has been pretty much set in stone for the last few days, weakening slightly down to a category two as it passes to the east of Bermuda. If you see Bermuda there, the yellow shadings around it, tropical storm watches have been posted for tropical storm conditions within the next 48 hours or so. And then once it gets past Bermuda, it picks up forward speed and zips off into the North Atlantic, eventually encountering some warmer or excuse me, cooler sea surface temperatures and leading to a weakening. Now, despite it not impacting any land directly, indirect effects are certainly going to be felt not only in Bermuda, but all the way along the eastern seaboard with massive swells, swells and wave heights 
really gaining strength as it heads towards the coast. We're looking 10, 15 foot waves, coastal erosion, rip current risk up there right into this upcoming weekend. Now, aside from Larry, we do have Invest 91L. In the past few days, we've been watching this and it's been steady, but there are changes to tell you about today. Odds of it actually developing into a tropical system have gone up slightly. We had 0% yesterday within the short term. Now that's up to 30%. And within the next five days, we're up to 40%. So that's a moderate chance of developing. And you see here on satellite imagery, in fact, if we switch it up over to infrared, it does look a little bit better than it did yesterday, especially the farther south it was when it was still technically over land in the Yucatan. Now it's over the warm ocean waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Relatively light wind shear, very moist profile in the atmosphere too. So somewhat favorable for this to continue to gain development and strengthen a little bit. And if you look closely, you can see a very broad rotation here. Still no center of circulation, still no recon aircraft flying through it. So in the short term, probably not developing, but as it lifts slowly off to the north, northeast, it could come together and be a brief tropical depression or tropical storm before it moves inland, likely somewhere over the panhandle of Florida. And this will likely lead to a very heavy rainfall event. Computer models are starting to get a little bit more of a sense of what this may do. Remember, as we've talked about in previous videos, until we get that closed center of circulation, uh, models are kind of guessing at where they think the center is. So we've got all sorts of different initialization points here and then moving in different directions from there. But we're starting to see more of a majority consensus off to the north, northeast, and then drifting almost due east because it's going to encounter a ridge and a frontal boundary that's hung up along the North Gulf Coast that should push it off to the east, but also do its work to enhance the rainfall and spread it out over some areas that don't need it, like in Louisiana, and mo most of that may be off towards the east. So how do the other computer models see things? The global for days, this wasn't really showing much with this system, but I wanna go all the way out to Thursday morning because at this point, it does show dual lows here with the European and the GFS, potentially maybe a tropical depression moving over the panhandle of Florida, Moving inland, but it's even more interesting is what happens after it re-enters the Atlantic off the southeast coast of the U.S. Very warm waters here. You've got the Gulf Stream coming up. Warm waters are replenished all the time. So we may see it actually on the stronger side after it exits the coastline and then moves away from the coast, bringing another round of increased surf and rip current risk as we get into this weekend, adding on top of to what Larry we'll be bringing on through as well. So what we're going to watch here with this low as it drifts off towards the east northeast, encountering that washed out frontal boundary that brought some rain showers and heavy rain squalls to Louisiana and Texas the last couple days, stalling through the area, ridging, developing over the Rockies, and that's going to enhance and spread out the rainfall event through the southeast coastline into Florida and then eventually into the Carolinas. QPF outlook here, rainfall forecast. Looking at that rain expanding one and a half, three inches, four inches, five inches of rain, possibly out towards Panama City, Pensacola area as we get into this weekend. All right, so it's pretty quiet overall in the Atlantic Basin, despite being only a couple days out uh, from the peak of the season, September 10th, September 11th. So what's going on here? Well, it has to do with a global scale wave that's going through, and this is called the Madden-Julian Oscillation. Now, there are two phases to this. One's favorable, one is unfavorable. One provides large scale rising motion, the other sinking motion. So you can imagine the favorable phase is when there's large scale rising, helps to induce thunderstorm development, and gives an extra boost to the tropical systems in development. Right now, it looks like we're entering the unfavorable phase, suppressed phase, keeping a sinking motion across the, uh, the part of the world that develops tropical systems. So we divide uh, the globe up into eight different sectors or zones. When we have the Madden Julia, Julian Oscillation in the favorable phase in eight and one, that helps to induce tropical activity and development. Right now it is located in zone three and is forecast to get stronger in zone four. So we could be going through a phase that we don't see much developing in the tropical Atlantic, but as we're getting towards the climatological peak, everything else is pretty favorable. So it may override this, especially if we also get something called a CCKW, convectively coupled Kelvin wave, that also adds a little bit of an indu induced rising motion to the atmosphere and will help to build it. But this is one of the players in the game here that could be acting to keep things rather quiet at least in the Atlantic Basin right now. Jumping over to the Eastern Pacific, on the infrared, we've got one system here uh, that's likely going to be the 15th named storm of the season, and that's out there in 
Not doing much right now. It's got about a 90% chance of developing as we go through the next 24 to 48 hours or so. 90%, it's Invest 96E, and another tropical wave here that's uh, pretty much got no chances of developing there. Uh, the names on the list, they are ahead of schedule in terms of when compared with the Atlantic. Uh, they had Nora last week. Olaf would be next and looking likely with a 90% chance there. All right, until next time, that's the latest for you there. We'll keep an eye on Invest 91L. David Paul is up later today, but if you want to find us on social media, we're on Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.